it's Valerie. Welcome back to this week's What's for Dinner. If you're new here, welcome. I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. I put out What's for Dinner videos every Sunday and I have three inspirational meals for you again this week and I hope that you enjoy them. And one of them is going to be a pumpkin pasta and that might sound weary to some of you but let me tell you it was really really good. Um, and simple to make so I hope that you enjoy that one and one of the meals is going to focus more around side dishes because I had an already seasoned chicken that I was using or having my boyfriend grill up so I focused on a couple side dishes to go along with it and those were really really good so I hope that you enjoy them and let's get started. This first meal is a cheesy chipotle pumpkin pasta. The recipe calls for one yellow onion and two cloves of garlic. I had a very large um, yellow onion so I'm only using a half here and I'm just going to go ahead and put that into some slices and then go ahead and dice that up and I'm going to go ahead and press my two cloves of garlic. Next, I'm taking my large skillet over medium heat and I'm going to go ahead and add about a tablespoon of olive oil and I'm going to go ahead and add in that onion. Um, I like to saute the onion before I add my garlic. I like to start to get it kind of soft um, and then I'll go ahead and add in my garlic and just saute those both until they're nice and soft and the onions are transparent and it says in the recipe that that's about three to five minutes and that seems about right. So I actually realized I didn't have chipotle powder like I thought I did. So I looked up a substitution and it said smoked pap paprika was the closest. So I'm adding a half a teaspoon of that uh, smoked paprika to the onion and garlic mixture. And just go ahead and stir that and get the um, onions and garlic nice and coated with that seasoning. Next I'm taking a 15 ounce can of pumpkin that is pureed 100% pumpkin not the pumpkin spice make sure that it's just pumpkin puree and go ahead and add that um, into your onion mixture and then you're going to need one and a half cups of chicken broth and I just made my chicken broth with some water and um, bouillon and added that in and then I'm going to go ahead and add a half a teaspoon of salt and some fresh cracked pepper and just give that all a good stir and you're going to want to stir that all until it's all very combined and your sauce becomes nice and smooth. Then you're going to want to turn your heat down to medium low and allow the sauce to simmer for 15 minutes then we're going to get started on the pasta. For that I just went ahead and brought a large pot of water to a boil, salted water, and added in my pasta. I'm adding in 8 ounces of penne and just cooking that to the package directions until al dente. And I decided I wanted some asparagus with this. So I'm just taking some of those and I'm going to air fry them. So I cleaned them and I'm just cutting off the ends and I'm just going to go ahead and season those. So first I'll go ahead and put a little oil on them and I'm going to season them with some salt and some garlic powder and some lemon pepper seasoning sounded really good on these so I'm going to add a little bit of that and I'm just going to go ahead and um, toss those with my tongs to get them all nice and coated and then I'm just going to go ahead and place those in my air fryer basket and I'm going to go ahead and air fry those at 400 degrees. I put 11 minutes on there. It depends how soft you want them. You can kind of check them anywhere between maybe like 9 to 11 minutes. Um, these still had, they were pretty soft but had a little bit of crunch. And once that sauce is done simmering for the 15 minutes, go ahead and turn your heat down to low. And you're going to go ahead and stir in a quarter cup of heavy cream. And I'm just mixing that in there. And once the pasta is drained, you're just going to go ahead and add that into your sauce mixture and just go ahead and stir that around to get all that pasta coated with that sauce. And this recipe calls for some Parmesan cheese, but I actually had a lot of mozzarella that I need to use up um, and I thought that still sounded like a nice cheesy 
pasta type cheese so I'm just gonna use that instead and um, yeah I'm just kind of mixing that in more than a quarter cup though I, I didn't really measure it I just uh, grated some and I'm adding a little at a time and stirring and seeing if I needed a little bit more and it came out a perfect amount of cheesy and in fact it was amazing I did decide to top that with some fresh Parmesan just a little um, maybe for looks for my photos but also for that little bit of um, cheese taste that Parmesan has that little bit sharper taste and um, I had that asparagus with it and it was really really good we loved this meal and my boyfriend was actually very weary of this meal because he loves pumpkin but more in a sweet not savory way but he actually really loved this like he wanted more this was really really not disappointing at all okay so this next meal I had some already seasoned chicken so I'm focusing on side dishes here and this is going to be a Mexican avocado salad and some Spanish rice like green Spanish rice though and now I'm getting started on the Mexican avocado salad and I'm not doing the dressing that the, the recipe calls for I'm gonna do a different recipes um, dressing it just sounded good to me and it's a uh, uh, cumin lime dressing so I'm actually doubling the recipe it calls for three tablespoons olive oil I'm actually using a third cup of olive oil and then a teaspoon of salt um, a teaspoon of ground cumin and a half a teaspoon of black pepper and it calls for a clove of garlic so I'm doing maybe two to three because I like a little extra garlic and it was a perfect thing to add extra garlic to so I'm just pressing that into it then it calls for a tablespoon of fresh lime juice so I am just going to uh, do the whole a uh, one whole lime I'm just gonna juice one whole lime and put it in there and then I'm just gonna place the lid on this little jar I love that I made it in a jar because I can just place the lid on the jar and just shake it all up in it and I'm also actually making this earlier in the day kind of prepping some of the meal ingredients because um, I wanted to save myself some time later when my boyfriend got home he could just throw the meat on the grill and I can just have these sides ready to go and yeah. So the recipe calls for a cup of cherry tomatoes. I ended up trying to get about a cup's worth, but then I had a few extra left over from the rest of the pint, and I figured a little extra tomatoes and vegetables are always amazing to me, so I just ended up using the whole pint of cherry tomatoes, and then it calls for one medium red pepper. Um, I had a very large one, so I'm just kind of cutting the amount that I feel is about a medium-sized one, and I'm just going to go ahead and dice that up. And I did go ahead and make sure to remove the ribs on the pepper as well as the seeds, and I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process with one small green bell pepper. Next, I'm taking a 15 ounce can of black beans and I'm going to go ahead and rinse and drain them and then just go ahead and add that into the salad. It calls for some fresh corn. I didn't have any at the store I went to, so I'm just using some canned corn and kind of eyeing it. I ended up using the whole can. You don't have to. I just love a lot of corn, so it wasn't a big deal to me to use the whole can. I didn't see a point in really saving part of it. And then um, if you're going to do the original recipe, it calls for the dressing at this point. So um, I prefer mine. I actually really love that um, cumin dressing. Uh, it was almost like Greek dressings to me. So um, I like that lighter taste to it and um, not having just everything all avocado, um, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and add my dressing in at that point, stir it all together. I gave it a taste. If it needed some additional salt, I went ahead and added that. And now I'm just taking one avocado and I went ahead and just cut that in the peel right there into some bigger size cubes. And then I just used my spoon to go ahead and spoon it out right into the salad. 
I was going to add a second avocado, but I decided not to and to just keep it to add fresh avocado the next day because I knew we were going to be having this as leftovers. I'm going to start off with the getting the stuff for the rice going. So this is going to make the green sauce that goes in the rice and it calls for two roasted poblanos. So I'm taking two poblanos that I cleaned and I dried and I'm going to place them on my baking sheet. And the recipe actually calls for a quarter cup of chopped onions. I decided to cut up a small onion and place it to roast with the poblanos as well as the garlic. Garlic, so it calls for two cloves of garlic and I just spritz those with some olive oil and I put the garlic in a foil and then you're going to go ahead and broil those for 10 minutes flipping halfway so you'll see me kind of flipping things around there I'm gonna spritz a little more oil on those um, onions and place it back in for the remaining five minutes and then once the poblanos were done um, I just went ahead and placed them in a bowl and you're gonna go ahead and cover them saran wrap I use the lid to the bowl and let them rest for about five ten minutes this is gonna make it to where you can peel the skins off like this and I'm using gloves here because I just don't want to be burning um, you know chilies and things can linger on your skin and I didn't want that problem so I just used some gloves and I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the seeds off and then I take um, well as much as I can and then I take it over to the sink really quick and rinse them off and that will get the remaining seeds off and just repeat that process with all of your poblanos and I just kind of pull up on the seed area like the stem area and that helps me get out most of the seeds to start off with so you want to make sure to get all that if you don't like it very hot also make sure to take the ribs out or as much as you can and now I'm adding the roasted poblano to my blender you can use a food processor I'm also adding in the roasted um, onion and garlic if you didn't roast any onion and garlic at this point now add in two cloves of fresh garlic and a quarter cup of chopped onions and then it calls for a half a cup of cilantro. At first I added that amount and then I was like, I don't need this last little bit of cilantro. So let me just go ahead and add it all in there um, and try to t keep as many stems out as possible. Even though um, it's going to all get processed up and um, the stems of cilantro actually have the most flavor compared to the leaves. So it doesn't matter too much. And then I'm just placing the lid on. And I'm going to go ahead and place that right on my blender and I'm going to give it some pulses to see if that worked out for me. And then I decided to try the puree function and that actually worked out great but I did have to take a spatula and kind of like push the cilantro leaves they get stuck to the side and they kind of cling to the side of the um, blender there. And then just puree that, puree that until it's nice and smooth. And now for the rice I'm taking my large skillet over... Um, kind of like a medium high heat and I placed three tablespoons of oil in there and one and a half cups of long grain rice it says to rinse it and I didn't because um, I never rinse my Spanish rice I always just put it in dry because I feel like it browns up better that way and you're gonna want to get that all nice and coated with the oil and let that rice really brown up till it's a nice golden color making sure to stir so that all parts of your rice can be nice and golden. Now I'm taking that roasted poblano mixture and I'm going to go ahead and add that into the rice. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in the chicken broth. It calls for two and a quarter cups of chicken broth. I have a two cup measuring cup here so I just did the two cups first um, with a couple cubes of like bouillon cubes I think I show you them in a second there I do two to the equivalent of the two cups of water and then I add that extra quarter cup of water in and it says to add some salt and um, I thought because of the bouillon I didn't really need it I figured I'd take the sauce after and if it needed it I'd add it but it didn't need it so now I'm just going to go ahead and mix that all together very well and let that come to a boil and then reduce the heat and let that simmer for about uh, 20 minutes um, it says 15 but I always like to do this rice for about 20 25 minutes that's the texture that I like it at then once it's cooked for that 20 to 25 minutes um, I take it off of the heat and I let it rest for 10 minutes and um, and then I'll go ahead and stir that all up once that 10 minutes of resting has happened so I was working on this rice um, while my boyfriend was grilling the chicken because I wanted it to be nice and fresh and hot and while he was downstairs grilling that chicken and it was dark outside so I didn't even go out to film him um, 
grilling it up. Um, you can also just cook it in a pan or if you have an indoor type grill pan. Um, just do your chicken however you want. But this is the chicken I used. It was from Aldi's and it has that Pappy's seasoning on it. It's really good. So if, um, I like the convenience of using that and just focusing on different sides to try out. This was amazing. I loved the rice and that avocado salad. Um, we've had the chicken many times, so we love it, but those sides are like new like cookout favorites for the summer. I think I'm definitely going to be making those more. This last meal is chili dog casserole. So I actually had a lot of russet potatoes to use up, and I thought some homestyle type air fried um, fries would be really good with this meal. So I just went ahead and cleaned up um, some russet potatoes, maybe about a few of them, a few big ones, and I'm just going to go ahead and chop those up. You can do this with as many potatoes as you'd like or whatever, whatever will fit in your air fryer. You can even bake these in the oven. I've done that before as well. I've just been really enjoying the crispiness that I get from the air fryer with them. So yeah, I'm just cutting those into some potato wedges, going to place some olive oil on them, and some seasonings are just going to be some seasoned salt, as well as a little bit of Tony Cacheries, and I'm pretty, keeping it pretty simple, but still flavorful. Then just going to go ahead and throw those in the basket, and move them around, and I'm going to air fry those at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. I do like um, them more on the 20 minute side, because I like them to be crispy. So I'm kind of following a recipe and I'm also kind of winging it because um, I kind of decided I was halving this recipe in a sense because it calls for a pack of hot dog buns and two packs of hot dogs and I only had one pack of hot dogs. So I thought I would use half the amount of buns um, but I still feel like I using the whole package would have been fine. In fact, I would have preferred it and I'll maybe it's because I made a substitution which I'll, you'll see in a bit here. But I chopped up those hot dog buns. I'm just adding them to the bottom of my baking dish here. Um, it calls for a 9 by 13 and because I was making less I used a little bit smaller of a baking dish. Maybe this is like an 8 by 11 and um, these are my hot dogs here. I'm using these all beef hot dogs. I had to use them up um, because they were coming up in date or it was like the last date on them. Like the last day on the date to use them. So this is why I looked up a recipe to make um, and this is what I came up with that for that. So just go ahead and slice those hot dogs up um, see, I like hot dogs, but I like there to not be a lot of meat in my dishes sometimes. So, one pack actually was great for us, and I, maybe it's because I also didn't want leftovers. If you have little ones you're feeding, they probably would love this so much, because it's like, it really is like a chili dog, like broken up, and it was tasty. It was very comforting of a food. Um, yeah, so we liked it. So go ahead and just place those chopped up hot dog buns hot dogs on top of your hot dog buns and then um, it calls for a can of chili or two cups of chili that you make like homemade chili and I was just using canned chili and I was actually using chili beans or like beans and chili sauce because I prefer that um, I try to keep like less of the meat out and I love like beans so I put that can on top and then I was like I could use more beans than this so I decided to add a second can so maybe that is why I feel like I could have used the entire package of buns because that like chili with bun mixture like would have really like worked well together so um, if you're doing that and you only have one pack of hot dogs add a little extra chili use your whole thing of buns because now I was left with a couple extra buns that I didn't even use up and they went to waste most likely um, just add some extra chili never hurt nobody in fact it was really really tasty and then it calls for some cheese some two cups of shredded cheddar cheese and I'm just using this bag kind because like I said this meal came about just because I needed to use some hot dogs up I needed a quick very quick meal and um, so using bagged cheese like that can be perfect for meals like this to help and save in time and I added that whole bag which is about the two cups I cooked that at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes and that was what it looked like and there's those crunchy nice delicious fries it's so good I love those and we liked this it was a good comfort meal um, it's something I could do in a pinch like that and that is all so thanks so much for watching friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future what's for dinner videos and I hope you all have an amazing week